Hello ladies and gentlemen. This short presentation is to revisit the set of technologies that you will encounter during the innovative multimedia module. To understand them, look at the three tier architecture which is used on the website. So at one end, the client is where the end user is really working with. The client system speaks to a server that provides basic information, but the server goes to a database for all the backup work. Thank you to Kiraz for the pictures. But with websites, your client system is your web browser that is directly used by the end user. The web browser communicates via the network to a server less visible in what we know with systems, but Apache or Microsoft's uh, Internet Information Server. And the database is most of the time one of those SQL systems You've worked so hard with me at SQL before, so there's a few brands of servers from Microsoft, from Oracle and others. Details of the different technologies that we'll encounter. Again, the three-tier architecture. One of the things we'll visit are the web browsers, and they include languages like HTML. HTML is used to organize the contents of web pages. Also, there are cascading style sheets, or sometimes we say just style sheets and they are there for the style the colors the positions of things the size of text all of those sorts of things that makes a web page good looking and finally they include javascript javascript is the language that controls the behavior of those systems and in the list of technologies that you'll encounter javascript will be the first full programming language step back through this HTML is there to structure content. There are all sorts of things computers can do, but you can't get HTML to control it. Same thing with style sheets. It is very focused on making pages look good, but JavaScript is truly a programming language. We can extend JavaScript and get it to do new things. In fact, people have used JavaScript outside of web browsers. And I mentioned jQuery here in gray. You'll see a few other things in gray. They are technologies that we will encounter, that we will talk about, that I will link material about, but depending on your choices of projects that you might choose to ignore. We said the client communicates to a server. So at the web server end, uh, we'll talk about a famous brand of web server called Apache. It's actually used by the university to provide you with a web server. The communication between client and server is done using a protocol called HTTP. We'll hear a bit about how HTTP works. To be able to control web servers ourselves, we'll use something called XAMPP. XAMPP is a package that includes, between other things, an Apache web server, and that you can run on your personal computers. But it's one of those things I've put in gray here because we might not have to work with it. But especially COVID means that we struggle to actually work with the university's own services. XAMPP is one of the alternatives. And on web servers, we often use a programming language called PHP. Remember I mentioned a programming language that JavaScript is a programming language. PHP is also a programming language. It is a little different, but mainly in purpose. Because it's on web servers, I can use the web server to centralize information coming from different people. So if I want to count how many visitors I have on my website, I have to do it by programming things at the server end, so programming things in PHP. While if I want to do something so that my customer has a good looking application, I have to do it in JavaScript because JavaScript is at the browser end of the process. Web servers is of course what other companies have to have their websites. And so if you want to use the services of other people's websites, you'd communicate to those servers in languages along with HTTP like JSON and through what are called APIs. API is actually a generic name for what people like Google Maps or YouTube for what they do when they let you exploit their systems within your website. It stands for Application Programming Interface. And basically, if Google wants you to be allowed to create your application while exploiting a bit of their services, 
They give their services via an API, a well-documented set of uh, commands that you can pass to Google Maps so that you display a map that uses their work. Finally, at the database server end of things, we will use a database system that is called MySQL. We've picked MySQL because it is well known for working nicely along with PHP, but also because it works nicely with XAMPP, it's easy to install and run and all of that sort of thing. It's not terribly different from the Oracle SQL language that you were learning in second year. You might have to organize your MySQL database through an administration tool, which is called PHP MyAdmin. One of those links between PHP and MySQL that there are so many of. Finally, there's space underneath, and that is for all sorts of things that are do not fit in this three-tier organization, but are part of the of the set of tools that you're going to encounter. So there's Notepad++, which is an excellent editor and which is free. Use cases are a good way of working out for a customer what it is that they want when they tell you about a system that they're curious about. Uh, we'll talk about something called Agile Development, which is a kind of project management technique, a way of organizing the project, in effect, in separate slices so that we can work on each slice one bit at a time and work out whether each slice has worked out before we embark on the next part. Then we'll talk about Git and open source systems, Git is a way of sharing code. You know, like if you write a web page or some style sheets for it, or any of these other technologies we're talking about here, you end up with a website made from text files that have your content, your images, your beha the behavior of your systems. If you have multiple versions of this and you don't know anymore which version is the right one or whether two people in a team have each half of your work, Git is a coordination tool. I will talk about an important discipline called user experience. And two examples of user experience are ways that we can actually draft what they can be on the website. We call that uh, wireframes and there are wireframing tools. Um, and there are uh, systems of what we call responsive designs that make it possible to have a design that adapts to multiple situations. So with that, you've got a solid tour of many of the of the ideas and technologies that we will talk about you can see that's quite a lot of separate pieces of software and ideas and techniques uh, it's worth saying that websites are not a single technique unlike your sql there isn't one package that you could download and that will get you a website or occasionally there are but the more united the process is the less interesting the website is. So what we have instead is this whole bunch of tools forming a big toolbox. And I could have named fewer and I could have named more, but that gives you a good idea of the kind of things that we are going to encounter. Thank you.